All right, I got another build here. I built this a while ago, but I never made a video on it. So I figured I'd throw up on YouTube. I put a lot of aftermarket on here. Um, some parts folks might be looking at online. So I figured I'd show them off and you can decide if you want to put them on yours as well. So um, obviously this is a uh, Tamiya Fast Attack re-release kit I picked up last year. Uh, when I was a kid, I really wanted a Tamiya Wild one never got around to getting it and now we'll re-release stuff and being middle-aged and having a little disposable income um i started looking at the wild one again and uh i started to think that the fast attack had a little bit more character to it uh the wild one had some better suspension on it um i replaced the suspension on here anyway which i'll get into in a minute um and beings i did serve in 101st airborne and it is a military style kit i figured i'd go with the fast attack um look good up here on the shelf so some things i did to this kit um, first thing, the uh, you see all the metal bits on here. The uh, there's a company online called RC Channel. They make a lot of uh, cast metal parts for various kits, and what they make here is a full uh, suspension uh, replacement for this or the Wild One with these cast alloy parts on here, and then um, also their metal front bumper, their aftermarket uh, oil dampers here, and um, I think they turn out really nice. And they go with the kit well. Um, originally, the uh, Fast Attack just had the spring dampers in the front, sort of grasshopper or a Hornet style with just the pin and the coil spring, no damping to it at all. Um, and then friction shocks in the back. And I went ahead and replaced it with these Archie Channel uh, four oil dampers. Underneath um, Archie Channel, like I said, they made these, these nice four cast alloy uh, suspension arms on here and uh, man I think it looks really nice and of course there are cast alloy front uh, bumper on here and it was direct replacement for the original parts um, obviously designed to work with their uh, their oil filled shocks so what they give you is I, I think I bought all I might have bought all this as a kit you can buy it all separate um, I can't remember exactly how I ordered it all now but they gave you the two new damper arms, the oil filled dampers, the front um, alloy swing arms, the alloy bumper, and then uh, the rear oil dampers are direct bolt on, and of course the uh, rear alloy swing arms, all direct replacement for the original parts. Um, the uh, the rear ones, there's a uh, this post right here, the threaded um, stud on there, protrude a little bit and uh, kept the suspension from fully going down. So once I torqued the uh, nut on there, I took a Dremel and just took off the extra so that gave me my suspension travel back. So if anybody gets this kit, you might run into that. The other thing I did on here was install these uh, LED lights. And originally, Tamiya had some uh, nice molded parts for the front and rear pots that you'd have to paint. Um, I bought a Axial 6 light LED kit, and I'll show you that part when I uh, crack the kit open. And then um, I took advantage of having the extra two lights and I used these two screw points here and instead of screwing from above, I screwed from underneath and torqued in those uh, axial light bucks above. So what I have is um, I got a four channel spectrum uh, remote here. I have a three channel receiver and I have the lights tied into channel three on a two position switch. So you can remote turn the lights on and off right here from the receiver. I've done this in a few kits now, really easy, and I'll show you those parts I used as well. And you can see the rear pots back here mounted in. Looks really nice, nice little scale kit. Back here, as far as the motor, I have a uh, Tamiya Brush CR tuned 35 turn motor. motor excuse me. Um, I just figured since it it is a nice kit, it's not really a basher. Um, when I do go out and run it, it goes fast enough. The uh, 35 turn. Um, gets the kit down the road pretty decent. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and crack this cover off and show you guys how I wired all the LEDs in um, and how I got the two position switch to work. All right, so I just loosened these screws up. Go ahead and slide this panel off here. Um, a lot of wires going on down the side here. Um, so this right here, this little assembly right here, this is an axial uh, light kit, and the part number on this, this is an axial AX24257, 
And what this gives you is four white LEDs and two red LEDs. And um, what you get with this kit is you get this little you get this little box right here, and it has a plug in the front, and a plug in the back, and a regular uh, receiver plug. And then they give you a dual strand of red LEDs, and then a uh, four strand here of white LEDs. And what I did was I just cut and spliced and cut and spliced and extended out those white LEDs. So it would go one, two, three, four, and then double all back in and then tie back in the receiver. So a lot of cutting and pasting, or cutting, excuse me, cutting and pasting, cutting and soldering. And what I did was I drilled holes in the side of the chassis right here and put these rubber grommets so I can run the wires from the LEDs in. So it was a real spaghetti mess of wires uh, going through there. Um, I tidied it up pretty decent. There's not a whole lot of room in this chassis. Um, the uh, speed controller is right underneath his feet. There's a little bit of space underneath here, but the, this was originally where the mechanical speed control and servo mounted, and just the layout in there is not a whole lot of room. The uh, receiver I moved, um, this is originally where your four AA batteries would go, and what I did was I just moved the receiver back here and put that receiver inside that little box there. And uh, that's why the rubber band's on there, because originally you would have had to pull out your double A's every now and then replace them for the old mechanical speed control. So I'm using this, this little two-way switch right here. You can get these on eBay, and I'll put a link in below for that. Um, it's advertised for aviation, and what this thing does is you plug it into your receiver, and then it's got a female plug on this end. You can plug uh, your regular RX plug in there, and it's just a two position switch. So you're drawing the six volts from your receiver and this goes on a two position switch. You switch it on, power on, switch it off, power off. And I basically took that and I tied the uh, actual light module into there. And that's how I ended up getting it to work with the uh, two-way position here on the DX4. Down is off, up is on. Like I said, it's all being powered by the receiver and between the uh, axial hookup and that two position switch. Uh, made for a nice little kit. I've done the same thing on my uh, CC01. I've done the uh, similar setup on my uh, CR01, or not CR01, uh, WR01. I can't remember. The GF01. Man, I got too many kits in here. My uh, CC01, I'm actually running a four channel radio, lights in the front, lights in the back, and then my uh, GF01, uh, I'm running a roll bar light with uh, four LEDs, and I'm using the, I'm, I've just hooked those LEDs directly into that two position switch. So everything tucked away, nice and neat ish, um, underneath the front cover of this kit right here. And, uh, Hopefully it stays in there and I don't have any issues with it so I don't have to uh, find a reason to take off these uh, these body posts again or these body screws. Just leave it buttoned up. I never have to worry about it anymore. So uh, I'm using the original uh, ESC that came with this just to, to me a pack in and don't even get me trying to guess the the nomenclature of it right now, but uh, it's the Tamiya Pack in ESC. It's good enough, uh, brushed ESC and um, powering everything. And like I said, I, I'm just running a uh, nickel metal hydride battery in there to power the whole setup. And uh, I think it's turned out pretty nice. The uh, driver figure, it had been a long time since I uh, brush painted anything. This is my first one. I think I did a better job on the uh, GFO1 driver that I just painted not that long ago. Um, but just, uh, all to me, a hobby paints, a little hobby shop down the street. And, um, I just, uh, I rattle can the body and rattle can the helmet. And then I brushed on the, uh, goggles, seat belts and the gloves. And I think it turned out pretty decent. And, uh, like I said, I, I was, uh, infantry 101st airborne 387th. 
So I just uh, went the cheap way out and put a uh, 101st Airborne sticker on the front. Um, good enough. Good enough. There's no paint on the body. So when I do go out and run it, and I do take this kit out and run it, it's not just on the shelf. And uh, I don't have to worry about uh, chipping any of the paint off on the body. Because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of folks do paint these, and they do turn out nice, uh, nice painted. So uh, another neat kit, another neat build. And like I said, the uh, RC Channel Suspension. If you got a uh, wild one or a fast attack and uh, a few dollars to spend, uh, this stuff wasn't real cheap. Um, it's a uh, nice setup. Um, a lot nicer than the um, the old plastic and the uh, friction springs. So that's it. Another build down. So if anybody got any questions on the kit, go ahead uh, hit me up in the comments. I'll do my best to uh, answer any questions. And. Uh, I don't know, I think it turned out pretty good, so thanks for watching.